Good afternoon, this is Norman Graham live at the Empire State Plaza here in Albany, New York. We're here with Assembly Member Frank Boylan Jr. from the 55th District in Brooklyn here. How are you, Frank? How are you, brother? Doing well, doing well. Frank, glad, glad to finally get you here on the show. It's been a while. Yes, sir. Been I'm yes, sir. While. Yes, sir. Uh, how are things going at the Black and Latino Caucus here? We are finally coming together to caucus on some of the major issues that uh, affect the uh, black and Latino communities uh, in our district, specifically Brooklyn. Brooklyn is, you know, like I used to say, when when there are, when other folks get colds, we get the flu. We're trying to figure fill the medication of, of, for, for our communities. That's with healthcare, education, you name it. We're just trying to make sure that all those uh, dollars and policies get made right here in our in, in, in the capital. Well, right now in a season where budget cuts is going to be a very big problem, right. can you tell us how this would affect our community and your district, the 55th Assembly District? Well, just as an example, the the um, budget for education is set to get cut 1.7 billion dollars. So what happens there is there are no after-school programs. All of the curriculums get cut. All of our conversation in terms of our kids, in which we already know have issues, all of that stuff gets cut. So we have to make sure that we that doesn't land on the head of our already underserved position. So what do you put? Projecting that you're going to be trying to get back put in the budget, the school budget. We're going to try to make sure that the people in Bed Stuy, Brownsville, East New York, and Flatbush, that those cuts do not land on our areas, and that the dollars that it takes to make sure that Bed Stuy, Brownsville, and Bushwick gets what it needs in terms of education comes comes home. It's a real it's real simple mathematics. They send us up here to represent. It's time for us to represent. Okay, well I'll tell you this: the unions are strong. The teachers' union is down here. They're here every year. Right. And we have an assault on the unions. Uh, you heard about assault on the labor. Wisconsin. Wisconsin is yeah, really a big problem. Yeah, I've been there. I've been. What are you gonna do as a, a legislative, as a lawmaker, to offset something like this from happening in our community? Well, real simple. If there wasn't, if there wasn't for unions, we wouldn't have an eight-hour workday. We wouldn't have health care. We wouldn't have the major pieces that it takes to actually make sure that our folks get a living wage. You know, that they get you know prevailing wage. Excuse me. A lot of this stuff it won't be put in play without the unions. So I'm a union supporter. I'm a union member. I was a member of local 372 and 1199 before I was elected. And we want to make sure that they stay strong. The UFT is for, for a lot of our teachers uh, that, 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 that you know serviced our area. I'm in District 23, 17, 19, okay. 5, everything, all the districts that service our neighborhood in Brooklyn. We have to make sure that they're supported on a legislative level, which is what I'm all about here. So tell me something. I'm going to have to let you know that I'm a member of COBA Correction okay. Office of Benevolent Association, okay. my union president. No doubt about it. We'll be here. He'll be doing a show in okay. a little while. And we must let our people know again, you support all unions. And I am a union member, union supporter. I live in a union district. <laughs> I mean, you name it. Uh, it, it I'm, I support my folks because, like I said, without them, a lot of what we live and in, in, in operate with today, we wouldn't have it if it wasn't for you. Okay, so can you give us some information that we need to know about in our community, specifically how these cuts will affect us? Well, like I said, uh, $1.7 million cuts our education totally. Uh, you lose teachers, you lose, you lose utilities, you lose all your structure at that stage uh, from education, from health care. We've already lost quite a bit in health care, so we have to make sure that we keep that together. We have to make sure that that stays intact. That's what made us the county leader. Yes, indeed. We have to make sure that that, that that stays intact. We have to make sure that all the clinics and uh, 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 Brookdale Hospital, let's use that one for instance, uh, 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 an emergency room set for 284 people on a normal basis, there's over 500 people in there. In, in, Especially in the ER. over the weekend. The weekends are unbelievable. Have you ever seen a line out the door at an ER? I've seen it at Brookdale. A line out the door at an emergency room is unbelievable, so those cuts would cut that back. That would make sure that that doesn't happen. So we not only that they won't they won't get the health care at that stage. We're talking two or three day waits to get seen. Tell me That's what that would do if it was a, 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 in terms of health care. We're gonna switch this up. What are some of the pet projects now uh, that you're trying to get past? 
sponsor I, or co-sponsor. Well, there's tons of things. There's legislation. Uh, uh, there's, the, there's, there's, there's development projects that are big deal. We, we're, we're, we're talking about more. We're talking about more schools. We're talking about science and technology policy and facilities working right here in our community. We're talking about uh, getting the kids into uh, uh, sports and intramural programs because a lot of times there's nothing for our neighborhoods. There's nothing pretty much for our neighborhoods and to keep our kids busy. Uh, we want to give our kids the opportunity to go to schools. We want to give our kids the opportunity to play sports. You got a lot of character and talent with the kids in our neighborhood, but it doesn't come out. But how are we going to get this back? How are we going to get it back when we're losing money due to budget cuts every year? We got a what is it, a nine to ten billion dollar budget? Nine billion, not billion, but it's it's a it's a it's a public it's a public private partnership where a lot of our you know the emblem health care the the, the hips, the GHIs, the a lot of these folks that you see with little kiosks and, and, and buses in our neighborhood, they it's time for them to give back to our neighborhoods. It's time for them to uh, 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 to, to support the neighborhoods where they are. These are unions you're talking about, of course. These are HMOs. Okay. Yo, yo, you're talking about the trucks that's outside uh, like the banks on Fulton Street. Right, right, right. The little kiosks okay. that you may see yeah. set up. Those big RVs that yeah. you see on the corners taking so, the boy so parking you, spots. What do you want them to do now? <laughs> Tell us what you want to support. do. Support this community. It's very simple. Okay. A lot of them already do. We've been working with a lot of them to come up with these uh, little league baseball. Just as I put that, so okay. we need to. We need to help our kids. We need to be able to affect our kids and give them something like this. I think it's important. I'm looking forward to seeing how this is going to work out. Uh, how is your relationship with the governor as well as I've the, known, the whole assembly as a whole? I've known the governor since I was 15 years old. I have a very good relationship with him. We had dinner the other night to talk about these cuts and how they're going to affect our community. And we have to make sure that uh, in, our, in our relationship open, and the dialogue is open right now to make sure that this is something that uh, doesn't affect our neighborhoods as a whole. Well, what do you say to the people that said while the governor was running, he did he seemed kind of distant to our community. So now we're going to ask for assistance when a lot of us felt that he really wasn't there, that he didn't come out strong enough to say when he was running. When he was running. Because we live in a, a, a Brooklyn, uh -huh. 1.8 million Democrats. Okay. All right. A he lot of take times. Him, he did take it for granted. Of course. Look, the, the, you know, did the president come see you? No, not That's at all. It's a Democratic base, and you have quite a few. He was at uh, he was at an event at the Brooklyn Marriott, the president, when he ran. Um, well, early at, stages, of right? This was early '08. Basically, what it is is that's a guaranteed base. What we have to do is get people into Brooklyn to let them know that none of this is guaranteed. We, you, you have to understand our wants and our needs as constituents. So how do you first. How, how do you leverage that as an assemblyman to say let's not take this group for granted? What I because do, are we maybe we have to say that we're too loyal Democrats that sometimes oh they're going to vote for me anyway. That's but that's what they're going to we're going to get those votes anyway. So we New don't York have to City, go. New York City as a whole. You got eight the, 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 the Democrats to Republican and independent basis, eight to one. Okay. So you're guaranteed those eight Democratic votes as opposed to that one is what I'm trying to tell you. What we basically have to look at, what we basically have to look at right now is is making sure that we bring these individual electeds or want to be elected to the table and say, well, here's where we are. We need to make sure that all of our needs and wants are put on the table and say, we're talking about education and health care, yes. crime prevention, job prevention. Bear in mind, we get hit with all all of this, the, we get hit with all the of this domestic year product, the domestic product coming out of Brooklyn. I'm sorry, New York. Okay. We have to talk about that. Right now, it's more intellectual than hands-on. You know, New York comes from a manufacturing background. We don't do that anymore in New York. It's all about finance. It's all about Wall Street. And we become a numbers-based economy here in the state, and a lot of our folks don't have it. But a lot of a lot of a lot of our folks don't have that that mechanism, and that's where the the math the science and the, and the technology comes into play. That's where it comes into play. We have to make sure that that, that whole thing happens. Well, I'm going to ask you a question. When I was down here last year, one of my key things that I wanted to talk about was what happened to the stimulus fund in our community? There is the, the, there is a high-speed rail proposal that's going to run straight through Brownsville. Mm -hmm. 
that's going to run straight through Brownsville. There is several hospital projects. One of you had spoken one of my projects. So we're reopening St. Mary's Hospital. Finally. Finally. Okay. That's part of the stimulus money. It's going to help us to build that up. It's a multi-tiered approach over the next few years to actually get business back into our neighborhoods and get our people working. Again. But my, my area, one one two three three. That's where I live. Of course. Yeah. I believe we were supposed to projected to get about 116 million dollars from the stimulus fund. Right. And what happened to the money? Which project? Uh, That's what I'm trying to do well, too. money that could have went to the uh, small business people. Um, there was no direction from elected you officials. You gotta understand and explain what it to that it. is now. You gotta understand what it is. You really gotta understand what we're talking about. The stimulus project was put together to create jobs. Okay. Mostly manufacturing jobs. Mostly building jobs. Did you see any cranes in our neighborhood? No. Did you see any bulldozers or backholes or anything like that? It's a project-based economy. You have to have the project. Most of it came through uh, the new ERs at the different hospitals. We were talking so, about so tell me something. You do, believe that, you do believe that small business creates about two-thirds of the where job. It okay, so if you would have gave some of them small business people some money, they could have created some jobs. You're absolutely right. But absolutely right. No, there was no elected officials to give direction on how is this money going to get to our One community. One of the main problems that we have as a community is the communication. Okay. You know, this this medium is important because we're not using it. Right. We don't use it at all. I have tons of information coming out of my di my district office, um, and we try to get to all the community leaders, the, the tenant leaders, the block associations, the, the the preachers, so on and so forth, the principals of the different schools, to talk about the opportunities that we have coming out of our office, and they then dis disseminate it to their communities, their their parents, their tenants, their their neighbors, so on and so forth. We're doing an emailing emailing and, the, and actually we, we call it snail mail. Okay. We're still putting uh, stamps on letters and sending it out as well which is a little backwards nowadays but we understand that most folks aren't, aren't tech, that, that, that technology, you know, they don't have the tech, uh, technology advanced okay. to actually get into that. We want to make sure that that's so one you, of our goals. So for now on this, this is what you do. If you bring it to us on On The Spot Production, if you bring it to us and you come see us with whatever you have that's to talk about, We'll get it out there. You that, should have, as an elected official, a database of emails. Right, we do. If you got a database of emails, we'll get it out there. But the lack of information in our community has become a problem. And right now, with the assault on disseminating you, the, the, the information is a very is a very big problem. Getting it out because you, for, for you to know about that, hundred sixty million dollars is coming out into the community, and nobody else knowing about that. That's a problem. But a lot of us business people knew about the money. We just right. couldn't figure out, and we reached out to our elected officials to figure out how we could get it. I don't think that happened. We didn't get it. We, no, they no, had no, meetings. No, no, the no, congressman had meetings. We didn't get the money. The, the Fulton Street merchants and everybody else reached out for to get this here. We didn't. We couldn't get the money. Well, well how about this? Uh, real estate taxes are killing a lot of our businesses in Central Brooklyn. Fulton, Pickin, Belmont, Broadway, uh, Pennsylvania, uh, you name it, Ralph Avenue, uh, Rockway Avenue, uh, 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 Lewis, you name it. A lot of folks are going out of business because they can't afford to stay there anymore. Exactly. What we're doing, person, and this is something that we can give, give, to, the, give, give to the constituents and the folks watching, what we're doing is uh, Commissioner Walsh from Small Business and his entire team is going to be in our district talking to those businesses, getting that information out to the businesses on how we can help with the uh, business taxes and their loans. Loans going out to expand your business. You don't, you, you don't know, a lot of folks don't know that there are tax incentives for hiring people. Like, oh, whenever they bring some folks in, they get a tax break for that. These are things that we want to not only educate the businesses on, but the, the constituents as well, so they can come out and knock on these doors and say, look, I want to work in your restaurant. I want to work in your store doing retail. I want to come out and help you to build. build. A few weeks ago, we had local the, the electricians union and the plumbers union in our office. In our office. To not, you know, you got a lot of folks who have the experience, but they're not licensed. 
and they, and they don't have the, the, the connect to get the jobs. We have a stadium being built downtown, ladies and gentlemen. Yes. I mean, a lot of you take the train or drive or go through there or go through there. I mean, the, 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 the work is there. All we have to do is go get it. Um, I like to, the, 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 to, to sort of pat myself as the accountability uh, elected official, and I want you all to hold me to the, the, hold me to what I say. So come to the meetings, come knock on my door, call me. My number is 718-498-8681. Again, Tell them again. 718-498-8681. I want you to come Give me the email call. address, too. It's Boylan, B-O-Y-L-A-N-W, at assembly, A-S-S-E-M-B-L-Y, dot U-S, dot N, I'm sorry, dot N-Y, dot U-S, dot gov. I need you to call me, I need you to reach out, I need you to email, come call me. This is something that we're really, really interested in helping folks in our neighborhood, and uh, we welcome you. Frank Bull in the 55th District here in Brooklyn. We'll be in touch with him. We're going right. to have him in the studio That's for right. more information and let us know whatever, whatever projects he has. We'll be informing the community. Frank Ball, an assemblyman of the 55th District. They call him Junior. That's him. <laughs> Thank you, man. Thank you again. Please come out. Please reach out to us. We want to help you. That's why we're here. Thank you.